Okay, I am going to demonstrate what happens when pest control people come in and use their products. Okay, this is a park right next to my customer's place. That was a tree. So they come in and they put their bait and gas all over this park every three weeks, making money every three weeks for the end of time, which chases the gophers over here, doing all kinds of damage including over by their pool and this wasn't here so they went and applied after I went and set all the traps and now I have this brand new because that was the line going into this den now I've got a new one and it's going up to the house and there's a new tunnel that goes up along the sidewalk in between this bush and that house So. That's one. That's the den. And that's the one that leads down to the course. Down to the... And it, what it does is, it's not a dead end, it's actually up. It goes straight up. That's where it's going right out there. <sighs> no way I can clean all that out. It's too late. But that is full of babies. <sighs> so, when you guys use pest control company, you're actually causing more problems. Because unlike them, we actually show you a dead gopher. They can't. From here on out, I would like to uh, actually walk you through the rest of this video. As you can see, this is a first year female. That means she has just gone through her first season. This tunnel system is very firm. It's active. She's got material inside this tunnel system. Uh, I opened it up at the junction, which is a very specific location. Um, in order to get to the nest, and to where she's active, this is where you've got to go. You can see she's right here. She knows I'm here. She knows I'm after her. Uh, these are incredibly intelligent beings. This is a three, actually it was a four tunnel intersection or junction. And one going where she's at now, one to the left, and then one to the right and one directly where my camera is. So. As you can see, she went through the opposite side and has come back this side. So she's going to try and block off this tunnel system and her den to keep her pups safe from me. This is what they're good at. Now, the reason that she is able to go down this tunnel system and still come back a different way is because there's many tunnels that intersect. It's not just one tunnel. There's going to be, you know, 10, 15 different tunnel systems that go into a nest, which you'll see later on in this video. So here she is moving another, you know, batch of soil to try and block off what I'm doing. their hands are designed uh, for digging. They are digging machines. Um, the pads on their hands are uh, sculpted. They have uh, almost, they're almost like two additional thumbs in the palm and that's what helps them to dig and also move that soil forward. They have pouches on the sides of their faces which is, gives them the name pocket gophers. And so they're able to put material into those pockets and transfer it easily. But 
this is a very small gopher. She's um, not even four months old. And that's why I'm saying this is her first season. So uh, first season gophers are going to have uh, typically four uh, max pups. And then every season thereafter, there's going to be six. So you can see her at the very end of the tunnel system that we can see where the corner is. She's peeking out around there. She knows I'm here. She knows exactly what she's doing. And she's, she's fighting me. She's going to battle. So uh, this is one of the reasons why I'm careful about sticking my hands in to these tunnels because they do bite and they bite very hard. Um, those teeth are very strong, very thick, and they can go easily through flesh and also through the bone. Gophers will chip away at asphalt and concrete and pipe. They chew through PVC like it's nothing. Um, usually the, the drip lines are like paper. It, it's nothing for them. So here she is. She's bringing another load. Um, trying to push that up. She's running back through the tunnel systems. Um, so she's, you know, she's very comfortable in uh, protecting her domain. And so, um, just gonna keep at it. But as you can see, from the size of that hand shovel, she is quite small. Now, if you're not aware, pocket gophers are strict herbivores. This means they will only eat live plants. All of the products on the U.S. market, outside of gopher traps, those products were never tested on pocket gophers. They were tested on omnivores, rats, mice, and ferrets, and those will eat anything. They'll even eat their own pups. So for the industry to uh, sell these products that are for omnivores and take money from the public is uh, really out of line. If a gopher is not going to eat these products, they push them above ground. And that's where young children can get to them. Birds are the usual targets, um, unfortunately, unintended targets. Uh, the birds will eat it, take flight, and um, drop to the earth wherever and dogs, cats, and wildlife eat them, and they are also killed. So with these products comes great responsibility, and the it, people need to understand that you can't just throw whatever you want into the ground and expect it to work. Pocket gophers have to be trapped. That is the only true method. Anything other than that is called control, and that is exactly what they call it in the pest control industry. It's controlling. It's moving them, forcing them from one property into another property. So instead of the one homeowner being responsible and having the gophers killed and trapped and eliminated, they're moving them to the neighbor and making them foot the bill. And that's not being honest and that's not being a good neighbor. So everybody needs to be responsible, take care of their own gopher pop problem, and let's get this gopher population back under control. Too many people have been ignoring it for generations. Farms have been exempt. I know I come from farming and we, we did trap. This is how I have learned to do this. I have been trapping since 1966. I was trained by my father, who was trained by his father. There are methods that work, and these are the methods that we do. Now anybody can say, oh, I, I can trap a gopher. Yes, you can. Anybody can do it. You have to know what you're doing, though, because if you teach a gopher, one that is as intelligent as this one, you will never be able to catch another one. So you do need to know what you're doing. It is a process uh, to learn. 
You also need to understand that these carry a lot of diseases and parasites, and even the fleas can also carry diseases. So you've got to pay attention to what you're doing. You've got to know what you're doing. You do it right the first time. You can't go into any job like this with one or two traps and expect to have success. It just doesn't work that way. So here we are at this point. She's still trying to pack it in. Eventually what's going to happen and when you mess with the gopher enough, she's going to back in reverse back down that tunnel system and she's going to seal it off. And what they do when they seal is they will fan spray their urine onto that soil and they pack their bodies against it and it forms almost like a concrete. It's very rigid. You can't get through it. Uh, so while I'm over here setting traps, um, you can see that gap where she's mounded up at the top there. She's still back there. So I'm pulling the trap in and out, trying to reset it. I had some difficulties with this spring trap for a while. Um, and so we, we finally got through it and figured it out. But she's going to continue to go back to, up and down this, trying to seal us off. See, here she is once again. And so each time I've got to pull that soil out and set the trap. I mean... It, I'm very fast at putting my traps in and uh, this is how quick she is. Now here's the other part. It's usually never one gopher and I have seen people, um, companies in California and other states state that there's only one gopher per yard or square foot, or they're charging by the square foot, or by the mount, and that's ludicrous. These gophers share tunnels. They live in massive colonies, and as each generation is born, they intersect with other tunnels for miles. This is what they do. It's not one per yard. I don't, you know, I, I have people that say, I don't know where it came from. You know, we've never had any, and all of a sudden they showed up. That is not how it happens. Gophers will use anything we put on or in the ground against us. And they always tunnel underneath walls, along pipes. They'll follow your pipes. See how it's closed off there at the top? So she sealed that. So now here's the den. I'm going after the pups. Um, but they will follow those pipes directly under your house and under your bathtub where they will create a nest just like this one and start giving birth to generations of pups. And they don't hibernate and they are continually having pups. Always. So... This is why you don't ignore these, because they will continue to be a problem. And you're going to have, in 30 days, these pups are going to be mature enough to start breeding. And they do inbreed. You see these pups right here. So, even without the mother, now these ones still have their umbilical cords on. They're very, very fresh. But even without the mother, they can survive because they're herbivores. They're already eating this nest. That's the whole purpose of this nest is that she rolls this up and she backs in and gives birth into that nest. And then they immediately start foraging on that nest. So even though their eyes and their ears aren't open yet, they are still fully capable of burrowing and tunneling and digging and eating. They are born with their teeth. So I have many photos of these. Um, once I got them uh, out, I did take them with me. I did not 
injure them. I didn't hurt them. Um, when we can use them for this type of uh, research, we actually take them back with us. We uh, will, you know, try and raise them. I, I have property that's way out in the middle of nowhere. And so any, any gopher that we put on video, we rescue, so to speak, because I have people that call all the time that have ca captured one. We'll take that to our place, and that's where they resume their lives. Um, for those that are not viable, you know, for example, somebody that's really hurt it or their dog did, um, we'll pick it up and we will contact one of the bird sanctuaries where they have the predatory birds and then they're donated over to them. So we're always looking for those too. Anyhow, so this is uh, a den removal. And, uh, you know, at the very start of this video, I talked about the company that was gassing and applying poison right next to this. And uh, I was told by the woman next door that she had witnessed this person gassing not inches from where I'm digging right now. And so this is the problem with these products is they are deadly products for everything except gophers. They don't work. The moment that you're walking on the soil, they know we're here. Once you open that closed air system, they definitely know that you're there and they're going to immediately seal off that tunnel. So the, the way that we have been trained, uh, the way I was trained, is to make sure that I have more time to work with these gophers in order to capture them. Um, and so this is why there's a lot of methods that we do that is not on this video that you can't see. Uh, the traps, you know, the, not the same trap I've been using since they developed them. Um, so I'm working on my own design now uh, to get that out. But anyhow, so this is the process that we do. Uh, it's not just a simple, hey, we're going to go out and put a trap or two into your property and we'll see how good we can do. And Or another one that I ran into um, <laughs> where they, uh, they're gassing right next to my traps, which will destroy my traps, literally, in just one application. It destroys them. It turns them to rust. And they're charging three thousand dollars to gas and then they say that they'll on a year's contract you have to sign a contract and then they'll come by and if they don't see any fresh mounds then there's nothing going on and they leave well the problem with that is the dirt mounds only mean two things you got new breeding going on or a gopher den is being expanded to fit more pups. Other than that, these tunnels are underground being actively used by hundreds, if not thousands, of pocket gophers. So when you have a gopher problem, don't hire just anybody. You need to hire people who know what they're doing. They need to know what a gopher is, how they operate, their behavior, how they tunnel upside down, just like that hole in the center of the, right there. They, they come through the bottom, they come through the ceilings, they come through the sides, the walls, everything. They are going to be everywhere. You got to take care of the problem right. We can help you. Give us a call or text. TheGoForgetters.com. We're the only ones and we're women owned. Call 480-489-1729 or texting is always better. Thanks.